Hello everyone, this is Hamad Zafar and in this video we will talk about the VNF LCM emulator which offers a try and learn approach to its users for understanding the lifecycle management of virtual network functions. During this introductory part of the video, we will briefly talk about HC Industry Specification Group on Network Function Virtualization and its sole working group. We will go over the features of VNFLCM emulator and the benefits that the tool offers to the NFE community. We will also talk about how users can interact with the emulator followed by a short demo. Here is a brief introduction of the presenters. I myself am working as Assistant Manager Research and Standardization at Extro Research and I was part of the team that developed the VNFLCM emulator. My co-presenter Pietro works as a system and software engineer in the R&D department at Nextworks. He has been involved with the development of the emulator as well. At CISG NFE continuously strives to promote interoperability in the NFE ecosystem through standard specifications for NFE reference points, interfaces and deployment templates. The ISG also offers several specifications on security, reliability, and testing aspects of network function virtualization. Its sole working group defines standard APIs for NFE Mano interfaces and provides their data model specifications. Through specialist task forces, the ISG and its working groups organize activities to support the adoption of standard specifications and promote interoperability. VNF LCM emulator is one example of such activities. It is a server-side implementation of VNF lifecycle management API, emulating communication between NFE orchestrator and VNF manager. It offers users to interact with the API producer through Swagger UI. All the VNF LCM operations supported by the emulator are according to the standard workflows defined in HC group specification NFE SOL 003 version 3.3.1. The tool is publicly accessible at the link that is shown on this slide. The emulator supports retrieval of available VNF descriptors. Users can perform CRUD operations on VNF instances through respective endpoints. Different lifecycle management operations can also be performed on the created VNF instances. There is also support for custom notifications and users can subscribe to specific type of VNF LCM operation occurrence notifications that they want to receive. Combined with HC Group specification, NFE SOL 003 and the associated OpenAPI descriptions, the VNF LCM emulator can be very helpful for NFE solution developers and testers to gain a deeper understanding of VNF LCM workflows. The tool has something to offer to the developers and researchers that may be working on other layers of the NFE stack, such as cloud infrastructure. The emulator can provide them insights into the messages that are exchanged between a VNFM and a virtualized infrastructure manager such as OpenStack. A detailed guide on how to interact with the tool is available on HC NFE wiki page and can be accessed on the provided link. VNF LCM emulator was developed under Specialist Task Force 598 and the task force experts can be reached on their respective emails as shown on this slide. Now, my co-presenter Pietro will deliver a short demo on how to interact with the emulator by performing basic VNF lifecycle management operations. The VNF LSCM emulator Hamad just described is available at this link I'm selecting. First step for using the emulator is to obtain an API key using this endpoint here. Then copy paste this API key in the corresponding form in order to be authorized for using all the endpoints of the WNF LSCM emulator. As a next step, we need to create our WNF instance and we need to specify at least the mandatory parameters. In the header of the request, we need to specify the API version, which it is 2.0.0, to be in compliance with the specification. 
in the body request beyond the WNF instance name and WNF instance description we need to specify the WNF descriptor identifier in our case we retrieve this identifier from the corresponding endpoint for the management of the information of the WNF descriptor after sending the request to create the WNF instance, we can see that an identifier is associated with it. Initially, the WNF instance it is in not instantiated status, and as a next step, we we'll instantiate this WNF using the ID generated. Indeed, using the corresponding endpoint available in the Swagger UI is possible to instantiate our 1F instance specifying our 1F instance identifier, the API version as we did before, and we need to specify also the flavor ID available into the 1F descriptor information. Then we send a request to instantiate our 1F instance and as a response in the header we got a location that we are going to use to retrieve the status of our instantiation request. In fact, copy-pasting this location ID into the corresponding endpoint available into the Swagger UI is possible to see that our 1F instance is under processing status. After a while, it switches status from processing to completed. Going to see the information related to our 1F instance specifying in the corresponding endpoint the 1F instance ID, we can see that a lot of attributes have been filled beyond the endpoints related to the lifecycle management of our 1F instance. Information such as the flavor ID, 1F state, instantiation state and other information have been filled as part of the instantiation process of our 1F instance. This is a small subset of what the 1F LSCM emulator is capable of. Its functionalities are grouped within different categories of endpoints within the Swagger UI. Beyond the API key management already shown, there are endpoints related to the management of the 1F descriptor's information and notification. The 1F LSCM emulator manages also the subscriptions related to the 1F instances events. Moreover, it's possible to create, read and delete 1F instances using this group of endpoints. With this group of endpoints, it's possible to manage the life cycle of one or more 1F instances. Last but not least, we have the 1F LSCM operation occurrences endpoints for retrieving the information related to the operations on the 1F instances. To conclude, at this link here, it's possible to find the user guide, the software architecture and deployment documentation related to the 1F LCM emulator. Thank you for watching this video. You can find here the references to understand deeply how the 1F LCM emulator is made and how it can be used. Looking at the wiki, the user guide and the Sol3 version 3.3.1 specification. You can also find information related to the special task force at the corresponding link and you can report bugs on the issue tracker.